Greetings and welcome to the 54th episode of Morrowind Modding Showcases and as always I'm your host Talk Elf Guy. and uh, today we have 13 more mods to review in pleasure with an overall Doomer theme to them. There's uh, quite a few fantastic and really creatively designed mods for you guys to see in this episode and I'm really you know pretty excited to share them with you and uh, you know first things first though you can find all the download links for these mods down in the video description below. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started with our popular mod of the week, which uh, this week is Balmora Dwemer's Subhouse by Printer Stomper. This mod adds a small and somewhat hidden trapdoor underneath one of the bridges in Balmora. Inside you'll find a mysterious but quite atmospheric cavern that's been, you know, slightly flooded and seems to open up onto, you know, some sort of Dwemer ruin buried underneath the uh, streets and walkways of the city above. And uh, this Dwemer ruin, as it turns out, is the secret underground there for an old Dwemer submarine that apparently still works actually. Uh, you can get inside and press the lever to be taken to a new Dwemer ruin out on the bottom of the sea floor somewhere. Now this is a really, you know, kind of unique concept for a Dwemer ruin with, you know, open windows looking out into the vast sea beyond the meager chambers of this Dwemer facility. And of course, there's still some active Dwemer centurions around that you'll have to, you know, fight through first. Though this isn't really that big of a challenge, uh, the purpose of this mod is actually more of a housing mod than a dungeon mod, so anyone above level 3 or level 5 should, you know, be good to go. But uh, moving on, the first bit of living quarters down here is a small lounge with more of those, you know, large windows looking out onto the ocean, and you can actually see some swordfish swimming around out there. And uh, this is just a really nicely furnished room with a small desk and study space, a few chairs to take in the ocean view with, and even a few cushions to lounge around on and, you know, enjoy a drink. And uh, not to mention a few pre-decorated shells and the like. And uh, next up we have what is probably my favourite room in this Dwemer themed housing mod. A combined garden, kitchen and dining room. But before you can, you know, truly enjoy it, you're going to need to deal with that annoying Dwemer ghost over there. But once you've uh, done that, you'll find an absolutely beautiful and extremely cosy set of quarters here. Including gardens with a hammock looking out onto the sea that you can just sort of lounge in. And a kitchen with a warmly lit oven. A dining table that's already set with a bit of clutter and a well for drawing water, which is of course always convenient for when you need to, you know, put the kettle on for company. And uh, the last set of rooms here towards the back, this charming uh, Dwemer underwater facility, is of course your own personal quarters, including a small area with storage containers, an oven to cook a few, you know, personal meals, and a bath that's already been drawn for your convenience, and uh, like the rest of this ruin, there's several, you know, lovely large-scale windows looking out onto the sea beyond, not to mention two beds, one of which can be used by a companion, and of course there's a bathroom back here as well. And uh, there's one last thing I'll need to show off here, and that's this, uh, you know, little Dwemer Centurion fellow here. You can order him to follow you around and be a temporary companion, or, you know, have him patrol, or just, you know, stay in place. And this is just a really lovely housing mod to check out. For our house mod of the week this week, we have the Cave of Elysian by Tweak. And uh, this mod adds a small and rather unassuming little cave entrance to the Bitter Coast region, just a little ways up the road from Cedanine. But heading inside, you'll find a massive central cavern chamber dominated by a central Dwemer ruin sitting in the middle of a lake. And this is one of the more, you know, fantastical house mods I've seen from Morrowind. There's a lot of cool stuff here, and this entire cavern is pretty epic looking, with the Dwemer ruin sitting in the middle, surrounded by the lake and waterfalls towards the back. And there's a ton of detail here as well, with lots of, you know, flora from, you know, large bitter coast style trees to overgrown grass and weeds around the central island here and uh, lots of flowers and moss, so, uh, you know, giving this cavern a very atmospheric and unique look to it. There's also a nice, you know, outdoor area with a table and chairs where you can, you know, sit and enjoy the surroundings. An armor forge, a statue here in the gardens, and gosh, you know, this place just, it looks completely amazing, and I should also mention that this cavern does, you know, use exterior lighting, in case you were, you know, wondering about that. So during the evening hours, it'll be a bit darker, and at night time, it'll, you know, of course be completely dark, which allows for, you know, more dynamic lighting settings, depending on the time of day, which is, you know, kind of neat. And uh, real quick, I did just want to uh, show this place off a bit under a different time of day, because that dynamic lighting, you know, always adds a nice touch to, you know, mods like this. But anyway, moving on inside, this is a really creative and interesting looking house mod, to say the least. The main entry hall here is actually one large dome that's been subdivided onto multiple levels, including a wooden stairwell that'll take you down to the ring floor here, where you can, you know, see an overview of the dome. And there's uh, some decidedly unique stairs leading down to the main floor, and there's even a small lounge over to the, you know, side with shelves and an other 
oven, and the whole place is just, you know, incredibly unique looking. I don't think I've ever, you know, seen a design quite like this before. And uh, moving on, there's a central gallery room uh, next to the entry dome, which again employs just a really unique looking design with a sort of, you know, rock garden in the uh, center and lots of these uh, Duma pillars heading up towards the mezzanine above. And there's a lot of cabinets in here that can be used for displaying items and the like, as well as, you know, storing items, since, the, you know, they're also containers. And there's also a few benches in here, but this is primarily the central hall that connects you to the rest of your Duma home. Next up, we have the master bedroom, which is really more of, you know, several rooms combined into one large hall here with a lounge and you know sort of kitchen like area here in the front including a few display shelves and a small you know seating area with cushions and the like here towards the uh, wall screens and there's also a few you know closet containers for storing items and this whole room feels you know pretty atmospheric and cozy with the way the lighting is set up and how the room's divided and up on a small platform you have your master bed which is truly king size and you know rather inviting looking it uh, pretty much, you know, goes without saying at this point, but this is one, you know, really nice house small in terms of design and style. And there is one last room here I want to show off for you guys. Another dome room that acts as the main display hall and alchemy lab for your new Dumu home. Including a second floor level of bookshelves that you can use to display and store items. And again, the design here is just so unique and one of a kind. Of how the author has used these wooden platforms in conjunction with Duma architecture. I just, I really love it. And down below we have a sort of alchemy lab and study area with labelled ingredient containers on one side here. And a few tables and desks where you could, you know, display items or keep your alchemical equipment or uh, what have you. And uh, before I forget, there is a storage hall underneath the Duma Ruin with tons of containers for you to, you know, store your items in. And I just, you know, I can't recommend this mod enough. I definitely suggest giving it a try. This week's gameplay mod of the week is Illegal Items by Kindy, and basically what this mod does is it adds a uh, new dialogue topic when you first join the Imperial Legion called Illegal Items. And essentially, this is an immersion mod. It allows you to, you know, turn in illegal items, most notably Duma artifacts, to a ranking Imperial officer, such as, you know, Darius here. But I believe other officers will work just as well. Uh, basically, you can surrender, you know, these illegal items for a finder's fee, usually about 75% uh, of the item's actual value. So you can, you know, turn in a Duma Cog, a Duma Ball, Cups, Armors, uh, Weapons, Coins, and a number of other items, and still get gold for them. And this is just, you know, a nice little immersion addition. Since there's uh, plenty of dialogue in Vanilla Morrowind talking about how the sale and trade of Duma artifacts is illegal, yet uh, merchants never really seem to care in practice. Uh, this way you can, you know, stay true to the law and still make a, you know, quick Drake here and there. Though you obviously need to be a member of the Imperial Legion in order to uh, do all this. And you can also turn in other items like raw ebony and, uh, you know, glass, which the Empire supposedly has exclusive mining rights to. Next up, we have our Dungeon Mod of the Week, and this week we have Wonderful Archaeologist Society Pro by David Evil. And uh, this is, you know, kind of a big mod, really. It's uh, not just a dungeon mod, though that's the main draw here, certainly. Uh, to start out with, this mod adds a new massive guild hall next to Wolverine Hall that's, uh, you know, home to the Wonderful Archaeologist Society, a group dedicated to exploring dungeons, uncovering ruins, and searching the depths of Odenfell for, you know, mysterious artifacts. And their headquarters here in Sadrif Mora are, you know, quite lovely looking and, you know, certainly kind of, you know, epic looking as well. There's a uh, lot of nice exterior detailing going on here and uh, many of you may remember that the author David Evil also made some other, you know, highly creative uh, mods back in the day, such as the Duma Galleon mod that we showcased way back in one of our early episodes. And he has a ton of just really amazing mods on Morrowind modding history that I'd recommend checking out. And uh, real quick, I'm going to spend just a little bit of time looking at the interior, but uh, we're not going to be showing off that much of it actually, because this is a dungeon mod, and we're going to be focusing more on the dungeon aspects here. And uh, also because this interior is absurdly laggy, uh, that's mostly due to the fact that the entire interior is in one giant cell, and this building is four stories tall with a basement. There must be at least a couple of thousand objects in here. But uh, anyway, this new guild, as far as I can tell, isn't actually joinable. And, you know, starting out, most of the members will actually have a pretty low disposition with you. Still, there is a bit of new lore in here. You'll find a number of new books up in the uh, guild's library detailing, you know, various dungeons and artifacts. As well as some of uh, David Evil's earlier mods. 
But moving on to the real meat of this mod, the wonderful Archaeologist Society maintains a set of secret underground train stations across Vardenfell, connecting various ruins with the cities of Dagenfell and Sadr of Mora, and the core Duma train station can be found underneath the headquarters with numerous tracks and Duma steam engines ready to, you know, take you to various points both far and near. Just talk to any of the uh, station employees who travel to any of the other stations, and you know, I just have to comment about how creative the designs in this mod are. I mean, just look at these Duma trains, they look fantastic, and I know, you know, train whiz will probably really appreciate them, and of course, auto clock and carrot ferret as well. I know you all really love Duma trains, and the designs here are certainly quite interesting, and if nothing else, these Duma train stations are probably a good enough reason to play this mod by itself without also including two medium to large sized dungeons as well. And there's also a small set of rooms that act as, you know, the personal quarters for the train masters here. And you want to see a lot of Duma furnishings and items in this mod, like you can see here. And uh, one last thing before we get to, to the actual dungeon part of this mod, I wanted to show off a second train station here where you can, you know, sort of get an idea of some of the different designs here. And this one is underneath Arkenthand, and there's four stations in total, uh, each one with a completely unique and original design, and with a unique Duma train engine. And uh, yes, I know, I can already hear some of you train lovers salivating at the mouth already, but uh, anyway, moving on to the actual dungeons here, this mod adds two medium and large dungeons for you to explore and fight through that are being controlled supposedly by mad cannibalistic archaeologists, which is certainly an... Well, you know, interesting set of opponents to uh, face, but uh, more on that later. Each of these dungeons is between three and five interior cells long, and uh, some of these areas can get, you know, pretty massive. But starting out, the first dungeon is suspiciously empty, but the further down you go, the more opponents you'll face, both of the Dumas Interior variety and of the Mad Cannibalistic Archaeologist variety. And eventually you'll get to the heart of the Duma dungeon, which is a series of large Duma chambers interspersed with caverns full of Duma machinery, uh, lava pools, and lots of archers to chip away at your health as you run through them. And overall, you want to be around uh, level 15 as a starting point for this dungeon mod. It isn't particularly difficult, but some areas have a lot of foes with archers in hard to reach positions that'll keep you on your toes and always looking for a bolt in your back. And there's probably about uh, five hours of good dungeon delving here, making it an easy mod to recommend, but uh, we're not quite done yet. There is one more thing I wanted to show you guys. In addition to a large Duma dungeon, you also find a pretty massive Telvani and Dunma Stronghold style dungeon in this mod as well, and we'll be skipping over really most of the content in this mod to avoid spoilers, but uh, needless to say, this is a great and definitely creatively unique dungeon mod that's uh, definitely worth checking out. For our items of the week this week, we have Ethereum Forging by Grand1911, and at this mod adds a secret forge hidden somewhere deep beneath the uh, mini Duma ruins of Ardenfell. And should you follow this dark cavern into the depths, you'll find an Ethereum Forge being guarded by an Ethereum uh, Duma Centurion, a powerful foe with, you know, some fairly damaging attacks. Though he shouldn't be too much of a challenge for most players above, I think, maybe uh, level 10 or so though he does cast an awful lot of those uh, fireballs. And uh, when you've finally defeated him, you can grab your first Ethereum crystal and head over to the forge here to start making Ethereum equipment, which includes a wide array of armors, weapons, throwing weapons, and even gear for beast races. Each of these options requires one Ethereum crystal, as well as scrap metal from Duma Centurions and a Duma armor piece or weapon. And uh, once you've selected your option, your new Ethereum equipment will show up in your inventory. And in order to get more Ethereum crystals to make uh, more gear, you're going to need to, you know, explore a number of the mines in Vardenfell and check out the ore veins for glass, diamonds, and ebony. Ethereum crystals spawn, you know, very rarely in these veins, like about one crystal per every 15 veins or so. As such, they're really quite, you know, valuable, and it'll take you a really long time before you're able to get a full set of Ethereum equipment. And here you can see a full set of Ethereum armor, and it's a pretty cool looking, almost Skyrim-like uh, style of Duma armor with Ethereum crystal outlines that add, you know, a bit of color contrast. And of course, you can uh, see one of the Ethereum weapons here as uh, well, and each piece of Ethereum armor and each weapon comes with a unique enchantment that fortifies your attributes and skills. And each armor piece also has a pretty high heavy armor rating as well. So this is ideal for, you know, warrior type characters. And due to the uh, rare nature of the ingredients involved in making all of this, the valuable enchantments, you know, kind of balance out. 
And uh, real quick, here you can see another one of the Ethereum weapons here. And there's pretty much one of every kind from uh, war hammers to daggers, short swords, battle axes, war axes, spears, halberds, and uh, much more. Speaking of, here you can see a ton of these Ethereum items on display, including Ethereum crystals, an Ethereum amulet and ring, which uh, both come with their own, you know, little enchantments. A number of other Ethereum weapons such as arrows, bolts, crossbows, and even small hammers. This is just a really fantastic item set and, you know, definitely worth checking out. This week's quest of the week is Doomer Scholarship by Bronzebone Mods. And uh, basically what this mod does is it adds a rather interesting looking extension to Arkenthand outside of uh, Bomora. With this uh, cool looking Doomer Gate Tower thing that guards the bridge leading to Arkenthand with a neat little, you know, rock arch that has a lot of Doomer machinery and ruins sticking out of it. And in case you are wondering, if you're using distant land, this really makes for some awesome screenshots from Balmora, because it, you know, essentially doubles the Doom of Towers that you can see in the distance. But uh, anyway, heading on inside, this is a simple one-room Doom of Tower complex that's a bit on the messy side. Seems this Khajiit researcher has uh, taken up residence here to, you know, study Doom of Centurions, and is currently trying to build a new Centurion from, you know, scratch. And you can offer to help out, and this will start a series of quests where you'll, you know, have to retrieve various Duma artifacts, scrap metal, and armor and weapons in order to uh, help this research. Now this is really a fairly simple set of fetch quests for you to do, but uh, given the rarity of the items involved, it will take you a little while to do. And your reward for completing this quest is a new Duma Spear Centurion to accompany you on your travels. Uh, this fellow comes with companion share, including over 1,200 pounds of storage, as well as a repair mechanism, so he can, you know, repair your gear, which uh, could be, you know, quite handy. And of course, he could prove, you know, fairly useful in battle as well, and regardless, this is a fairly creative and nice little quest mod that's uh, definitely well worth checking out. Next up we have our landmass mod of the week, which this week is Nerevine's Castle by Zapera. And this mod adds a new landmass north of Dagenfell where you'll find the Neverine's Castle, a large mixed style fortification of Imperial and Duma architecture. And as you might expect from the uh, title of the mod here, you're meant to install this after you've already, you know, become the Neverine. You can play it before then of course, but you'll be denied entrance into the main part of the castle until you've, you know, completed the main quest and all that. So that's, you know, just something to keep in mind. But moving on, the island itself isn't really that uh, big. The castle itself dominates a large portion of the central island. But there's also a docks for you to uh, park your boat at if you have a boat sailing mod. And there's also a fairly good sized town on the island over here on the other side of the castle's walls. And the town is about a dozen or so buildings, including shops, taverns, an East Empire company, uh, office, and uh, various houses, and... There's uh, also a docks here, naturally, offering transportation to the mainland. And uh, there's also a ton of, you know, market stalls here. And overall, it's a fairly straightforward town, built along just, you know, the one road. And uh, real quick, I did want to uh, show the landmass on the map here, so you can, you know, get an idea for conflicts. It should be compatible with Town Rebuilt, but it may conflict with Tel Morgana. I know uh, both islands are in a fairly similar spot, and this is actually a pretty popular area for landmass mods. So that's just something to keep in mind, and uh, while this mod does include a sizable town, the real meat is unquestionably the Neverine's Castle itself, which you can see here, and uh, this is the sort of, you know, main entry hall that'll connect you to all the parts of the castle, and it should go without saying that this is one massive castle mod. you also notice a lot of Duma architecture being used here, hence the whole, you know, Duma theme thing, and the FPS is going to take a bit of a hit in some of these interiors. There's just a lot going on, but uh, these are definitely some pretty cool chambers nonetheless. And uh, next up we have the throne room, which is a really cool looking space, but uh, real quick I wanted to show you guys that all these guards that uh, you see standing around, yeah, they're all merchants actually, and they all have about a thousand bartering gold to buy your stuff, and uh, which is a nice little feature to include, but uh, anyway, Going back to the throne room here, the actual throne is on top of a large Telvani platform that uh, dominates the chambers, and down below, you'll find the common court where NPCs can gather to hear your verdicts, and there's even a small platform below for musicians to play on, and it's a really pretty dramatic looking room with, you know, lots of statues and of course these platforms offering a bit of verticality to the throne room. 
And the castle does, of course, come with a set of personal quarters for you to use after you've become the Neverine. And unlike the rest of the castle, these quarters aren't filled with NPCs, giving you a bit of privacy. Included in these quarters is a large dining room with a table capable of seating, you know, quite a few guests as well as a number of armor display mannequins that you can use for armor and clothing, not to mention some large, special high-capacity chests. And there's also a library with a ton of bookshelves, though you'll need to, you know, have a book rotate to actually use them for placing books, at least, you know, placing books efficiently. And naturally, there's also a large display hall for you to use with a number of display pedestals for showing off items, and there's also a few glass display cases along the uh, wall down here. And up on the second level, you'll find a couple of guest bedrooms for your important guests and companions to use. And uh, like any good castle mod, there's also a treasure vault hidden deep beneath the castle where you can store and display most of your, you know, precious possessions away from the prying eyes of an adoring public. There's uh, also an ingredient sorter included with this castle in one of the Dwemer rooms. Simply use this machine here and all of your ingredients will be transported up to the ingredient containers up on the second floor. Now there's a few other different areas to show off here, including an open market in the public part of the castle with merchants dealing in a wide number of goods and services. And uh, something that you may notice here is that pretty much every architectural style is represented in this castle somewhere. Whether Velothi like the uh, market or even Halalu architecture as seen in the council chambers, there's just, you know, quite a wide array of styles combined here for this castle. And in case you were wondering, there is a set of dungeons underneath the castle that you can, you know, uh, fight through, and this is a set of Dwemer dungeons specifically. Since the castle was apparently built over the remains of an ancient Dwemer facility, this is actually a pretty massive set of dungeons that includes about a dozen interiors or so. And some of these chambers can get fairly massive with uh, lots of bending hallways, and I suspect Zapera may have used a gin mod for some of these dungeons, though with significant alterations of course. But uh, anyway, something I should mention is that Zapera never actually finished this mod, uh, parts of it are still unfinished, namely the final dungeons and most of the quests. There is one or two quests in town though, including the option to buy a house in town until you've uh, become the Neverine. And the quest we're taking a look at here involves a pretty small unique dungeon underneath the town outside the uh, castle. With a bit of, you know, a Dwemer influence, naturally. And uh, overall, Neverine's Castle does have a lot to offer, even if it was, you know, never actually completed. And it's definitely in a playable state if you want to, you know, check it out for yourself. For our NPC mod of the week this week, we have Dwemer Race mod by T-Bone and VPN. And uh, this mod does, you know, pretty much what it says it does. It adds the Dwemer as a playable race on the shores of Morrowind. And presumably your new Dwemer character was one of the few who, you know, just happened to be elsewhere when the Duma technically disappeared. Uh, regardless, you can choose the uh, new Duma race as a starting race in the uh, charge-in process, including a number of different heads and hairstyles to choose from. And they pretty much all come with beards, of course. I mean, they are, you know, technically dwarves. And a few even come with hats as hair options. And you may recognize some of these hats as the iconic headgear that the, uh, you know, the Duma ghosts wear, the ones that you find in Duma ruins staying true to the Duma style. There's uh, also an option to play as a female Duma, though there seem to be a few less face and hair options to choose from with that gender. And uh, regardless, you can see a male Duma character here, and it should be noted that I'm using the Better Bodies add-on mod by VPN here. The original Duma Race mod didn't include Better Bodies support, and with the add-on, they basically have the same sort of bodies as the Bretons, I think. Either way, they still make uh, for some, you know, really cool-looking characters, especially with those, you know, little hats and beards that are so iconically Duma. And uh, real quick, here you can see a female Duma character, and you can, you know, kind of get an idea of how tall these characters are with the uh, height comparison with the uh, Dark Elf here. The uh, female Duma characters aren't quite as distinctive as the male characters, but nonetheless, it's nice to have that option, and they do look, you know, pretty decent by most standards. This week's new Meshes and Textures Mod of the Week is Insanity's Duma Weapons of Morrowind, for Morrowind by Insanity Sorrow and Converted, by Star Wars Gale 9875 and uh, Flash 3 And uh, this mod is a replacer for most of the weapons and textures for the uh, Duma Weapons of Morrowind using Insanity Sorrow's uh, weapon models from the Weapons of Morrowind mod from, you know, Oblivion, and uh, converted back into Morrowind by Star Wars Gale 9875. And in addition, Flash 3113 has made new weapon models and textures for the Duma Spears and Halberds as well. So this mod pretty much uh, replaces everything except Duma Crossbows. 
And uh, anyway, you can see some of these uh, Dwemer weapons here that uh, my character is holding. And uh, these are obviously really high quality and detailed models with a cool reflective surface that uh, really makes these stand out. And I'm going to try and zoom in pretty close here so you can get a pretty good look at these weapons. And I just wanted to show off uh, one more weapon that my character is wielding here before we do a more detailed look up close on these weapon models. And they're certainly, you know, quite stylish. You'll be the envy of every adventure in Vardenfell with these shiny new toys. And here you can see all of the dual weapons that have been replaced by this package. And I'm going to be getting the camera up, you know, real close here to these models. So you can, you know, really make out all the details here. But uh, all in all, this package replaces the models and textures for dual short swords, maces, battle axes, war axes, claymores, war hammers, spears, and halberds. And uh, keep in mind, those latter two were made from scratch by Flash 313. So they may look, you know, just slightly different from the rest, but are no less, you know, incredibly impressive looking. And the detail here is just, you know, really astounding. You can make out small patterns, nuts and bolts, even the occasional bit of a uh, Duma script and writing on these weapons. This is probably the best replacer for Duma weaponry that's uh, currently available, and I'd highly recommend checking it out. Next up, we have our modest resource mod of the week, and uh, this week we have Tycho's Duma Chain Link uh, Corridors tile set. Modest resource by Tycho's. Now, this is a pretty nice resource package that adds a variation of the uh, standard Duma tile set, or using chain link fences for the walls instead of, you know, a more opaque material and uh, chain link ceilings as well and this allows you to do some you know pretty creative things like uh, build a uh, skywalk in a giant cavern where the player can you know see beyond the confines of the hallways and uh, corridors that they're currently you know walking through and as you can you know kind of see here and this is actually a demo file that comes with the modders resource down there that basically extends the arkanthan dungeon with an additional area to fight through so you could, you know, also potentially use this as a dungeon mod if you wanted to. Now, there's a few different types of uh, tile set options included with this resource, including the hallways, corridors, and stairwells that we just saw before, as well as room tile pieces, so you could potentially make some pretty large chambers with chain link walls, as you can uh, sort of see here, and there's even an option for chain link domes. Using the uh, Duma Observatory models as a base, and there's plenty of cool things that you could, you know, potentially use these resources for in your own Duma Ruins and uh, Cave Dungeons. For our Android Mod of the Week this week, we have Neutral Left Duma Home by Jake11611, and I do apologize if I mispronounce the uh, Duma name there, I'm not exactly very good at those. Uh, but anyway, this mod expands upon the Duma Ruin of Nucha Left, with a new upper level to the only Duma Ruin in the Grey's Lands of Odenfell, including a few new additions to the exterior here, such as uh, new towers and a new entrance that's, you know, high up on the hill, and you'll have to uh, climb up a ladder or, you know, fly up with levitation to get inside. And you also find that there's actually a note on the door when you do, apparently left by a Telvani wizard who wishes to be completely left alone, and of course, should you choose not to heed this warning and go on inside, you'll find this wizard's bodyguard, you know, ready to attack you right there in the main entry hall. But uh, once you've taken care of him, you'll see that this is actually a fairly cool looking Duma style home with a library, kitchen and dining room, all combined into one in the uh, main entry hall here with some empty shelves, but also a fair amount of decorations and clutter as well. Though you'll naturally need to also deal with the Talvani wizard first before, you know, actually moving in. And this isn't a particularly difficult fight, anyone above uh, level 5 should probably be fine here. But uh, anyway, once you've taken care of the wizard, you can move in and, you know, right here you'll find the main study area, including a machine that I believe can create Duma bolts, if I'm not mistaken. And there's also an observatory over here as well. And uh, this Duma ruin naturally also comes with a bedroom, including a bed, containers for storage, a few shelves for displaying items, and also a journal left behind by the uh, Telvani wizard, which adds a nice little bit of background story to this place, that's a, you know, sort of nice addition. And you also find a keg here where you can fill up your uh, mug with booze, assuming you load a few bottles into it beforehand, and this basically gives you a nice small effect boost. Now there's also something of a basement to this Duma home, including a small area of a Duma Centurion shop vendor, though he starts out as broken, and before you can actually use any of his services, you'll first have to uh, repair him with a ton of scrap metal. But uh, once you do, you can buy a bunch of Duma items from the solo, including apparently 5,000 Duma coins, so you can, you know, augment your Duma artifact collection with quite a few uh, different items. And he can also repair your gear for you, and... Uh, Finally, there's a small set of rooms down here, including a makeshift guest bedroom with shelves that could be used by a companion, potentially. 
and uh, several small display and storage lockers, most of which, you know, just have a couple of chests, closets, or a few shelves, but nonetheless, this is a uh, really cool looking house mod to check out. This week's Blast from the Past mod of the week is Nafarn Sanctuary by Aaron Dickey, and uh, with this mod, you'll find a new set of mysterious burial tombs near the city of Nissus, and these are a fairly long set of ancient Duma burial grounds, uh, filled with the undead, with ghosts, skeletons, bone lords, and bone walkers as uh, fairly low level opponents that you'll face, but uh, something I did want to point out here, while this is uh, actually a quest mod, as we'll get to on later, the dungeons included here are extremely well designed, with lots of atmospheric and detailed locations, hidden areas, some really nice loot to be discovered, and also great interior lighting. This is definitely one of those mods that rewards you for exploring the environment, which is, you know, something that I always, for one, appreciate in a good dungeon design, and there's a lot of that here. Now, this is actually a multi-celled dungeon with a few different, you know, environments to explore, such as those uh, cool bluish waterfall caverns that we just saw before, as well as a more, uh, I guess I would say, fiery set of caverns with large pools of lava and creepy skulls and spikes everywhere. There's a nice bit of variety here, and again, just lots of detail in the dungeon design. But anyway, moving on past the lava, death, undead, daedra, and certain fiery doom that uh, you know, roam these halls, deep below the surface you'll find a Duma Centurion protecting a particular burial site, and this will launch you off on a long series of quests that'll take you to a new island off the uh, coast of Ardenfell. This is the Nefarn Sanctuary, last standing stronghold of the Duomir. The island itself is little more than a blasted and ashen rock with a few remaining Duomir towers still standing as a testament to Duomir engineering. And uh, here, unlike the rest of Morrowind, these ruins are, you know, still guarded by loyal steam centurions that uh, patrol the stronghold's defensive line and won't immediately attack on sight. And uh, fair warning, this mod does conflict with Tamari Built. In fact, even trying to load both this and Tamari Built at the same time will cause a crash to desktop because it, you know, causes a scripting error with Nafan here. So just, you know, keep that in mind. But uh, there is a caveat there. This only conflicts with the Tamari Built Alpha. If you're just using the finished part of Tamari Built, you should be fine. But inside you'll find a massive Duma ruin, but this isn't, you know, full of hostels or anything. Now, this is actually filled with living, breathing dwarves, the last remnants of their civilization protected by some arcane force from the devastation that befell their brothers and sisters. As soon as you arrive, you'll be told to meet with the king, the last of his kind among the Duma, but, you know, before we get to all that, I did just want to uh, explore the Duma ruins a bit, because there's some, you know, pretty nice interior designs in here, including a massive and epic-sized a dining hall where presumably the court and the last remaining Duma gathered to, you know, take their meals before the king and lord of Nafarn. And uh, anyway, when you meet the uh, king for yourself, he'll task you with a series of quests to ensure the continued protection of Nafarn, explaining that he and his brethren can't leave the facility without dying, as all of the other Duma have after the events of Red Mountain. As such, he wants to use you as an envoy to Vodenfell to gather artifacts in order to, you know, maintain the arcane magical device that protects this last remaining sanctuary. And this is a fairly lengthy quest line to go on, and, you know, we won't be showing it all here due to, well, you know, spoilers and all that. But uh, suffice to say, this is a really cool quest mod, and definitely worth checking out with a lot of, you know, really awesome dungeons. And assuming you don't mind the uh, conflicts with Tannery Built, of course, so, you know, that is something to keep in mind. Finally, for our bonus mod of the week this week, we have the Lost Elder Scroll by the Drunken Mud Crab, and basically what this mod does is it adds a new book to the bookshop in Vivek that, you know, details the story of a sunken Duma ruin, where legend has it an Elder Scroll is lost. There's even a uh, sailor in Dagon Fell, the last remaining survivor of a horrible shipwreck, that uh, tells the tale of a strange Duma ruin deep underneath the sea that had uh, wrecked the hull of his vessel and, you know, caused it to sink with all hands on board, except, you know, him, the sole survivor. This will take you to a large sunken Duma ruin deep beneath the uh, ocean waves and far away from shore to the uh, north of Ardenfell. And you can see here, I'm sort of, you know, glitching through the uh, water haze here to show you guys the whole layout of this, you know, sunken facility. But diving deep down beneath the waves, you'll find a really cool and creatively designed Duma ruin of the aforementioned ill-fated ship that appears to have, you know, hit one of the towers and run aground, uh, capsizing down to the bottom of the sea floor here. 
Now this isn't a big mod or anything, so this uh, Sunken Duma Rune is probably about 90% of the total mod's content, but there is an interior here, and should you survive from drowning, you may find some ancient relics down here to, you know, take back as collectibles. And uh, that wraps up this week's episode of Moral Mining Showcases. Tune in next week for episode 55 with another 13 mods reviewing pleasure. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.